Hello and welcome back to the Sharks World ladies and gentlemen. Today's video is a special one as we're going to be talking about an amazing prehistoric shark. No, it's not the Megalodon, but rather its ancestor. The shark in question for today's video is one I've brought up a number of times. Creta Lamna, a shark that doesn't get anywhere near as much attention as I believe it deserves. With that in mind, this video is dedicated to such a shark and what we can learn from it. So let's not waste any time and dive right in. Grab you a cold drink, pull up a chair to the table, and let's talk about the ancestor of the Great White and Megalodon. So, for an introduction, Krita Lamna is a prehistoric shark that came into the picture during the early Cretaceous period and lived to about the Eocene period. It falls under the order of Lamniforms and the family of Otodonte. The word Krita Lamna comes from the Latin word Krita, which means chalk. Another influence for its name is the fact that it lived during the Cretaceous period, earning the nickname Cretaceous Lamna. It grew anywhere from 8 to 11 feet long and was one of, if not the most successful shark species in Earth's history. Not its time, but literally all of shark prehistoric history. It was more successful than great whites, hammerheads, tigers, filled sharks, Cretoxyrhina, and even Megalodon. These sharks were everywhere. North America, on the East Coast and the Midwest. Central America, West Africa, and the Near East, specifically in the Jordan area. And all of these ecosystems had different diverse marine species, a number of which were on its diet. From small fish to turtles, all the way up to mosasaurs and other marine reptiles. Because they were so widespread, when the species began to diversify, it gave rise to many different lineages of sharks we all know and love. Many scientists agree that this shark was the last common ancestor of the Great White and the Megalodon before the two species branched out. Krita Lamna is also the shark I based my most recent rendition of Megalodon on as far as how I think it might have looked. But shark toes, how can you base your look off of Krita Lamna? We just have the teeth and don't know how it looked. That's where you're wrong, because we know what Krita Lamna looked like. Thanks to the gentleman, Tyler Green. Here are some fossils of Krita Lamna with the teeth intact. You can see here that it has a build very similar to poor beagle sharks and salmon sharks. And because we know it was a lamniform, it was also likely an active and fast swimmer. It was also more than likely endothermic, just like Megalodon was confirmed to be endothermic. So for my shark scholars out there, what else can we figure out about this shark based on other lamniforms. I think it's safe to say that it was an extremely intelligent shark as great whites, makos, salmon sharks, and megalodon were also extremely smart animals. We can also say that they were masters of adaptation, especially considering that they lived in so many different places and dealt with a diverse cast of marine life. They were also probably very migratory, considering a number of lamniforms today are very migratory. One thing I am curious about is that because its build is so similar to poor beagle and salmon sharks, how much do they have in common? Has anyone compared the DNA of a salmon shark or poor beagle shark 
decrease the alumna, and establish any connections. Just some food for thought. Anyway, this is going to be where we end today's video. Thank you for once again giving me some of your time. If you haven't gone to the gym yet, you should. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then.